really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Welcome. This is Seriously Speaking. I don't know if you've been following the conversation from last week. In fact, when I told my guests we'll be back this week to finish the conversation, it's like, you should have let us change our clothes. But the truth is, it got so exciting. We've met these three guests, but we haven't heard the solutions that they have for us and how we can take part in politics, either as an electorate or an elected official. So that's why I'm welcoming you to a continuing conversation we began last week on Seriously Speaking today. And we are talking about politics and how to be totally involved in it. We're back with my guests in the panel, if you don't go away. Yes, my guests remain the same from last week as Sandia Hogan, who is running, we call it the mayor, because the municipality, the mayor of Calabar municipality in Cross River State. And also we have Mr. Obafemi George, who's running to be, not mayor, because it's not the Keja, no. running for the Etiosa local government area in Lagos. And then my dear friend, Mary Nenaya Ikoku, <laughs> who is not running for anything yet, mm -hmm. or probably will someday in future, yeah. but has been bitten by the bug. So I'm going to start from there, because, you know, we're having this conversation earlier, and my two experienced politicians says Mary and her team didn't do the right <laughs> thing. Asandia, right? Because Mary and her team, <laughs> She ran, she, she was advising part of the volunteers for Dr. Alex Oti, who ran for governorship in Abia State. And the Supreme Court says, well, they lost. Well, she says the people believe that they won, right? Anyway, so I said, what do you think? You're not going to ask me to give out my strategy here, are you? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You've got to no, keep since, things but, close to your but chest. But sincerely, no, sincerely. Just, I, I don't, I'm not sure she said that. Okay. I think she's, she, she, the, the point was that my candidates didn't do the right thing by being governor first, first that he should yes. have run for house of assembly uh, house of rep no, or no, no. something else senate or, or senate, senate before governorship um, before no. governorship not because that he didn't the really truth run is a good going in that fresh and even i a good strategy even i have experienced it because i ran for council in 2010 um going in fresh eyed is really good and you have the best ideas and you have great ideas but you need to understand the political terrain. And believe me, you, I'm not saying that there aren't first-timers that win, but a lot of times, even if you're a first-timer, there's one, you've been in the political system. Mm -hmm. You may not necessarily have run for office, mm -hmm. but you've been in the political system. And what had happened was that he was a technocrat that just went straight into become a politician mm -hmm. and didn't necessarily understand the terrain. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, so that, that means Obafemi's strategy, actually, I mean, Obafemi didn't set out wanting to run for local government chairman, mm -hmm. but you set out wanting to make a difference, so you joined yes. the party. Yes. So that strategy probably works better. Yes, because think? he became a politician before he decided to run. So, okay, maybe I should start. Obafemi, answer this question. Who is a politician? <laughs> Who then is a politician? Is it a cat carry member? Or? Um, w w from my perspective, when people tell me, that, are you a politician? And because they've been stereotyped, so I tell people, I'm not a politician. I'm a political scientist who is in politics. And that defines what I do. And I'll tell you how. For you to truly serve, you must have a genuine heart for service. And that must have been demonstrated over time. You just don't wake up one day and say, oh, you, you want to run for office. I made money. OK, simply because you're coming from somewhere, maybe as a bank MD, mm -hmm. which is the case of winning as candidate. If you look at other societies, before people run for office, they ask them, what have you done? And they see a track record of community work. Mm -hmm. Five years, 10 years, they must see that you know, you've been doing something selflessly for the community. Before you now come up and say, you know what, I want to run for office. At that point in time, you, 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 you're not just a credible candidate. There's a track record of community service. Does track record count, really? Because I, you know the word you said was genuine heart for service. There's no questioning the fact that if a, a person leaves whatever he's doing and says, I want to go back home, there must be some elements of service, because maybe you've made all the money that you want to make, and you want to just go serve your people. The only way I, can, I know that you have a genuine is to look at what you've done. Yeah. 
Over the years, what have you done for the community? So show the community. Show the community. I'll give you an example. After I ran for councillor, um, I realised... Were you in... disappointed that you lost, though? Of course I was. Of course. Um, but that didn't determine because, um, for me, it's a journey. It wasn't a destination. Mm -hmm. So I understood that uh, I, I, there was a war uh, in my ward. Um, my staff, um, I owned a restaurant at the time. My staff were telling me about, I'm very passionate about street, uh, about street kids and children in general. My, my staff told me about some street kids in my ward that just slept on the street and, you know, more or less just basically street kids. I went and I looked for them and I used to go and feed them every Sunday. I don't say this to get kudos or to get uh, brownie points or anything. I'm only saying this because it didn't cost me that much money. I was going to feed street kids. I owned a restaurant. I had rice in the restaurant anyway. I had tomatoes in the restaurant anyway. So even if I said I was going to buy everything from fresh, I wouldn't spend more than 5,000 feeding those children. Okay, but that's a good uh, point. Mm -hmm. The thing is, even though you were doing that for the people, mm -hmm. the party didn't pick you. No, 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 the party did But I wasn't doing it for the party. That was, that's community service. I, I, I didn't even, I don't even, till today, I don't even have pictures of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nobody knew. The people that knew were my friends that I, what had happened was I found out the ones that actually wanted to leave the streets and I got people to send money. They were going to send, uh, the people sent money for them to be trained as barbers, to be trained as mechanics and we rented so like a one-bedroom flat. So which is similar like flat. what you're doing too. Exactly. Yes. So now what happened with a candidate like yours? Okay. If I hear them, yeah. um, I, I think we are all just being comfortable with this stomach infrastructure kind of thing. Um, my support for my candidate, Dr. Oti, wasn't because of um, the things he's done in his community. My state at the time, or even up till now, needed someone who would turn around the state transform the state, fix the infrastructure, build, rebuild the state. The, the state was in complete decay, right? In fact, our hospitals were gone. In fact, if you had headache and entered a hospital in some of the local government, you would come out with AIDS. That was how bad things were. So we needed someone who we have seen a, a track record of things he's done. So, and you elsewhere, watch it, elsewhere. But not at home. No, even at home, he has done quite a lot. He's even somebody, the former governor. That doesn't say anything. You see, there are people, I don't know how you define politicians. This, my candidate isn't your regular Nigerian politician, but he is a leader. We needed a leader. Government, governance is too serious a thing to be left in the hands of politicians. It should be left I'm sure in the you hands both of, agree with that. It has to be left in the hands um, of leaders. What? You need real leaders. It's what we, our problem in this country is that we there don't have There are politicians that can be leaders. leaders. Yes, so yeah. what you need is somebody who would... That's where I agree. You want, you want critical infrastructures to be, to be fixed, and that's what we're looking for. I wasn't looking at the handout and things because, of course, standardly, he had hospitals in Abia State that is, uh, uh, have been working with him over 10 years on eye clinic. I'm not going to be mentioning those things. No, I, I'm, I mean, these, are things, you know why these are things he's been doing, but that's not why Why, why is that? Why we him. don't mention that? Because it's not really about who you are and what you what run you are, for. It's yeah. a function of what should be done that's right. Yeah. You just, I'm lucky I found these two who are running right now mm -hmm. and makes it easy so I can afford to say that because someone somebody say I'm, 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 I have PDP, I have APC, APC. so it doesn't really matter. Have no, no <laughs> so what's important to me is, what is important to me is what are those key things we can take away? Because from what I hear you say, leadership is key. But I also hear you say politicians can also be leaders. Yes. So maybe what we should be thinking about is how do we make our politicians leaders or our leaders politicians? Yes. Um, Okay, they, okay, let, I, okay. I, I just want to land. You okay, see, I'm sorry. There's, there's something about politics. Yes. Now, you are a leader in your own endeavor. We should try as a nation to make sure that people who step out to come and vie for any position in this country have track records of things that they do in their own personal endeavor and not about the things, the wrapper, the granite, the bag of rice they are sharing. And that's part of the problem we're having in this country. Can that man fix power? Can he create more entrepreneurs in your state? That's the kind of leader you want. Is he somebody that has heart for the people? Can he serve humanity? Yes, that's the kind of leader. Does he understand, does he have a vision? We want visionary leaders. And that's what we should be thinking about, and, and we should be able to def know where, where politics starts, stops, and where leadership, yeah, where, where leadership really 
Because they okay, say man okay. is a political animal. Then really. Naya has taken my first half. Mm -hmm. But I'll be back and you must respond to these questions. I want both of you because you are now politicians. <laughs> and what makes me believe that you are leaders? I'll be right back. We'll take a short commercial break and I'll be back. Well, the question is we need political leaders. And I don't know whether there's a thin line between serving the people by giving them roads and serving the people by filling their stomachs. Asandia. I would like you to respond to that. Um, remember you had asked me earlier last week and I said there is, you can do both at the same time. The problem is that you can't change things overnight. You will not change things overnight. Things will change. And, okay, maybe not APC type of change, please. Uh -huh. uh -uh. Okay. As I was saying. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Things will change. Things but... will change, and we want that change, not their time. But you have to be able to marry both scenarios. When you go in to just say you're going to just, you're going to just, uh, what do you Turn call it? Turn things around. You're just going to build roads. Roads are good, but that person is going to tell you that other man came and gave me rice, and because of that rice, I'm going to vote for him. So what do you say? No, I mean, okay. You can't go and speak grammar at that point and tell him, oh, I'm going, oh, this is, I'm going to build roads for you and roads are going to be so great and you can take your farm products to the city. He knows that. He knows that's what you're meant to do anyway. But he also feels like if you don't give him rice now, he's not going to see you Maybe again. it's a little different in Lagos. I think Lagos people are more, you know. You know, um, mm. talking about leadership, talking about politics. Yes. In 1999, when this dispensation started, Yes. All the 36 states, basically, they were at the same level. Mm -hmm. OK, nothing was working all over the country. Now, Lagos State had a governor in 1999 who was in politics, but he's also a leader. Now, what makes a leader? A leader is someone who has a vision. He's seen 25 years down the line. He 50. can sell that vision to the people, and he can create a track that will take us from where we are to where we want to be. That was what we had in 1999. You had Ashiwaju Bola as Lagos State governor. And he said, listen, I want to build a mega city. You cannot build a mega city without a good revenue base. What did he do? He redesigned the revenue base of Lagos State. So that's a tax, Gorios. From 500 million <laughs> to 6 billion monthly, on a monthly basis. Yeah. And today, that is why Lagos is where it is today. Let me tell you, there's nothing you see in Lagos today. 90% of what you see in Lagos today, in terms of infrastructure, the integrated transport system, the lucky free trade zone. It goes back. Those were things that he designed. So subsequent governor, they've come in and they're just implementing that plan. Same that thing is with leadership. Donald Duke. That oh, is really? leadership. Same thing with Donald Duke. That is leadership in politics. So even if you have a technocrat in Fashola, you have a technocrat yes. in Governor Mbode, I will, I will, I will. there's a leader who had crafted a vision and people are working towards that vision. So leadership and politics, they go hand in hand. That's so that what I'm trying to State, say to her. Lagos so, State so, has so, demonstrated okay. that. And that is what I want to do at the local government level. If you look at my brochure, look at my website, yes, I've created a vision. Things. I've created a vision <laughs> for Etios and local government. I mean, look at the kind of secondary school he wants to put in Etios. <laughs> eh? And it, it can be done. It's possible. Are we holding yes. to it, man? It is possible. One is supposed to be behind my backyard. Four, See four years' time, I will come back on this show and I'll be held accountable for that. Thank you for watching Two Straight Editions. Two Straight Editions. Remember, you can always follow us on... I mean, this can be watched on, online. So you can continue the conversation on Twitter. And we'll see you again, same time, in this same place, next week.